Welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you as always by the GSMC Sports Network. And for our third segment of the day here on the show, we transition from the world of the NFL to college football for just a brief moment. We'll be talking about the fantasy stars in the world of college football. Now, week 11 of the college football season had a lot of chaos involved with it. Georgia losing. Alabama trouncing LSU in what was a CFP elimination game. And one where LSU was expected to show up and show out at home against this Alabama squad. You had a lot of close calls, but a lot of get-right games in certain regard. And these four players, whether they be involved in upsets or, like I said, get-right games, all four of them potentially had a point to prove, right? Or potentially wanted to show out and continue to prove that they are going to determine the CFP picture. Potentially, two of them, maybe not so much right now. But still, all four of them had very defining games in the world of college football this weekend. So without further ado, let's discuss them. Let's talk with the quarterback position for the first person to talk about here. My first fantasy star of the week, if you will. This guy has not showed up on this list in a long time, whether it be because of his injury lingering or because he simply, once he came back, did not perform to par. He just hasn't been effective enough for me to warrant putting on this list. But against Florida at home, he deserved it wholeheartedly. Perhaps the best quarterback performance of the weekend, truly showing that this offense is capable of making a national title run if he at the helm is efficient enough. And that is, and get to his graphic real quickly, Mr. Quinn you are the Texas Longhorns. 19-27, 333 yards, 5 touchdowns, a career high for him, 33.3 fantasy points. Now, it was against Florida, a very, very banged up team that's already going through a very tough season, has a tough stretch after this, and to top it all off, is questioning whether or not Billy Napier should be there, even though the AD is saying that he's giving him his vote of confidence. So obviously, not necessarily it's a team that will test him enough, much like Georgia did. But it's still a solid performance that proves that this offense is one of the most vaunted and fearsome in the college football world. And if Quinn Ewers is himself and can distribute the football in an efficient manner, play turnover-free ball, and play clean, and this offensive line can protect him. And this defense has the best potentially in the entirety of college football. Continue to play like they have. This is a national title contender. And you can say that Texas, by the end of the season, may not even have a high-profile win. They still have to go into College Station at the end of the year to play A&M in a big match that could have CFP implications. But they are a team that you know has the abilities at each and every skill position to hurt you. It's just about this man right here, Quinn Ewers, and what he can do the rest of the way to truly supplement this offense enough to warrant me saying that Texas is a national title contender and potentially, much like Vegas potentially thinks, the national title favorite. But I have to shout him out for performance. Hasn't been on this list in quite some time. Makes this appearance because of what we know he can do and what he did against Florida. Now in the running back position, this is a guy who kind of shook up the CFP picture a little bit. But this is one of those guys who you're going to have a much better season. And in this game at the very least, he did have a solid game. But... It is kind of disappointing that it wasn't necessarily that meaningful for his team. And I'm talking about Devin Neal of the Kansas Jayhawks. Now, the reason why Kansas was kind of floated around as preseason Big 12 favorite was because of that backfield, right? Jalen Daniels at the QB position and Devin Neal the running back position, two of the more explosive players in the country and in the Big 12. That was why they were getting a lot of hype. 
But this season, they've kind of regressed to the mean a little bit. They haven't been playing up to par. Jalen Daniels has been more mistake-prone, turnover-prone, and Devin Neal hasn't necessarily been able to supplement him. But in this game against Iowa State, that truly affected Iowa State's standing in the Big 12, Devin Neal finally showed up for 18 carries, 116 yards, and two touchdowns. And so Devin Neal is still someone who you can look at and say, I have to respect him for what he's built throughout his college career. He's just not having a good year. Potentially in a dynasty league, per se. If you're looking for a well-rounded running back who you know has had an illustrious college football career at Kansas, a bright spot in those past couple of years for them, you know that he can be effective enough in years to come, potentially if he has an NFL career, to potentially, if you're getting into the Dynasty League format, be someone special. And like I said, he's not always going to be the best. He's not always going to be someone who can make a change for a team. And this year, he's definitely not been that guy who we expected. But this is still a performance that's noteworthy for him to kind of get him back on track potentially and get him ready for what could be a very intriguing NFL career that a lot of fantasy football players might want to monitor because he's a very special player and this year has just not been his year. But he did throw a wrench into Iowa State's plans, and that could be enough for him this season. Now we have to acknowledge someone at the wide receiver position who did not necessarily have the best performance of the weekend, but did have a profound record broken in the annals of Ohio State history. That is Jeremiah Smith. Six receptions, 87 yards, one touchdown, 77 fantasy points. Again, not the best, most noteworthy wide receiver performance of the weekend. But what is noteworthy is that he broke the record with a single season freshman receiving touchdowns record, once held by the great Chris Carter. And that is noteworthy because this is someone who we already knew in spring camp, even before the season began, was going to be special. But we didn't know how special. And now that he has broken a freshman record This season for Ohio State, once held by one of the greats, this is someone we have to acknowledge as the face of college football right now and for the years to come. Because for as long as he's going to play, which may not be long, he could be someone in the sophomore year who's going to enter the draft. He's going to be a very high draft pick at that. He still is someone who I feel like is now becoming a brand of college football and that's not something that is said lightly I feel like what he's done this season is otherworldly there's been no Ohio State receiver like him even Marvin Harrison Jr. Mecca Abuka Jack Smith and Jigba nobody's been like him this early and it's scary that he still has so much eligibility left and so even though This wasn't his best performances. It was against Purdue. I have to acknowledge him as a truly special, otherworldly type of player at the wide receiver position for Ohio State. Amongst a truly generational crop of them, he might be the best. And then the last one I want to talk about, Valiant in defeat here. Someone who potentially has been one of the best wide receivers in the nation that nobody's been talking about but has truly proven that, you know, he has been a stalwart of this team. Jalen Noel of the Iowa State Cyclones. And even in this loss that all but eliminates them from the CFP picture, unless, you know, a miracle happens in terms of seeding in the Big 12, this is it for Iowa State. And it was a miraculous season for them. They played some of the most efficient, clean football for the first nine or so weeks this season and have fallen flat against Texas Tech and this time Kansas. But Jalen Noel, Rocco Beck, and Jaden Higgins, what a ride for them. One of the best QB wide receiver duos, trios really, in the country. But Jalen Noel, really special game, truly was not the reason they lost. A valiant effort from him. Eight receptions, 167 yards, two 
touchdowns for him. And, you know, I feel like Iowa State's going to be hard done by or feel hard done by, but they have to have their heads held high because in the very crowded Big 12 playoff picture, they were seen as an afterthought. This was supposed to be one of those years where this team simply was not going to be physical enough, perhaps, to compete with the big boys. They were talking about Kansas State. They were talking about Oklahoma State, potentially. Colorado, which is still in the Big 12 playoff picture, but not necessarily to the extent that people see them now. We're talking about so many of these teams. And Iowa State was mentioned. And so, to even be at this point, where we're saying they've put up such a great fight to even be in a position to say, hey, we nearly made the Big 12 championship game, and we were only eliminated in the final couple of weeks of the season, that's saying something. And Jalen Knoll has been a huge part of that. Not many people may know his name, but he certainly earned the respect of the Cyclones organization, Iowa State University, and potentially the eyes of the Big 12. Because this is someone who puts in the work, potentially was looked over from higher-end programs, and has made a name for himself at Iowa State. And in this very kind of chaotic Big 12 season, gave his team a fighting chance to say, we could have been Big 12 champions. And not many people can say that. And I know how tough, as a Texas fan, that Big 12 was in terms of trying to win week in, week out. So kudos to Iowa State, kudos to Jalen Noel. But overall, let me know what you think about this list because I love each and every single one of these players, what they did this weekend, whether it be like Quinn Ewers, getting right, getting his team back on track after a bye, heading into a pretty easy end of year schedule potential Pratt falls in their way but knowing that they have the capabilities to do it or a guy like Devin Neal who it wasn't his year this year but still put up a fantastic performance to put a dent into a guy like Jalen Nolan on Iowa State's season and then Jeremiah Smith of course a once in a lifetime talent let me know what you think about this list in the comments coming up next we start with positional rankings for week 11 of the NFL season with my QBs who will make that list we will be right back to talk about that right after this short break. <laughs> 